What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, I want to go through an AP Physics 1 type question that I see on the internet over and over again. It actually just came across my desk during a tutoring session that I had with a student the other day. Guys, if you're interested in tutoring, let me know. I am booking fast, but I am doing students virtually, literally all over the world for AP Physics 1. If that's something you're interested in, just drop an email. But this is a really, really popular question. It could be a little bit tricky too. So I want to go through the solution. There's actually three parts, an A, a B, and a C. And like I said, this is something that is very, very fair on the AP Physics level. The facts of the case are we have this astronaut. I think they use an astronaut to tell you that we're not on Earth. Okay, so when we're not on Earth, little g equals 10 meters per second squared is not going to apply. And they make that clear by saying we are on planet X. Now we're 100 meters above the ground, and that's very, very good to know. But generally, we've been dropping objects, right, in just free fall. But now the ball is going to be thrown upward with some initial velocity in the y direction equal to 15 meters per second. The rock reaches the ground 10 seconds after it is thrown. The atmosphere on planet X is negligible. That means there's just going to be no air resistance, and they want us to find the acceleration due to gravity when it's near planet X. So this up here is Earth. What the question is asking is, what is little g on planet X? x okay so let's just get our physics about us real quick and we'll start to list some variables which will make it very easy for us to solve now in free fall questions we know that we are most commonly going to use this formula right here the displacement is going to be equal to v naught t plus one half a t squared but before i can really plug into that i need to understand a couple of different things one i know the object is going to be going up and it's going to be coming back down so what i'm going to do is I'm going to call this direction positive, and I'm going to call this direction negative. I'm going to call this position x equals 100 meters, and I'm going to call down here x equals 0 meters. So the first variable that we want to solve for is displacement. And guys, just like any change, we know that change is final minus initial. So my position final is 0 meters. My initial position is going to be 100 meters, which means my displacement is going to be minus 100 meters. And that makes sense with this negative because I call down negative. So as the object travels from here initially down here, that must mean it's in the minus direction. Our initial velocity is going to be positive though because it is upward given Time, total time of flight is 10 seconds. Now, guys, also understand what that represents. That means the object went boop, 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 boop. That's all the 10 seconds right there. And we want to solve for A. That's the thing that we're given. So if I plug in chug now, minus 100 meters equals 15 meters per second times 10 seconds plus 1 half A. 10 seconds squared. I can clean this up a little bit. Minus 100 equals 150. And it's also worth noting here, once I establish a formula and a substitution with units, I do not need to continue with units through each time. Plus, this is going to be 100. I'm just going to take half of that. and I'm going to put 50A. I need to subtract 150 from each side. And I get 50A equals a minus 250 divided by 50, divided by 50. The acceleration, and in this case, the acceleration due to planet X, is going to be minus 5 meters per second squared. Now, does once again, does that minus make sense? Yes, as it's traveling upward, little g points downward in the minus direction. How does the speed of the rock when it reaches the ground compare to the speed of the rock when it is released? Is it going to be greater? Is it going to be equal to, or is it going to be less than, justify your answer. Well, if I draw that back over here again, guys, just so we can see what's going on. I'm not going to draw the astronaut because that's going to make things confusing. This is 15 meters per second. We know when it gets to max height, its velocity is going to be zero meters per second, but then it's going to accelerate downward. And when it gets back to here, it is going to be traveling this way at 15 meters per second, right along the same plane here. And the reason why is because this object is in free fall. So the acceleration on the object is equal here. The, the distance to here is equal to the distance here. 
So everything is the same with the exception of the exception of the direction. Now, once it gets to 15 meters per second here, it's still going to have a little g equal to 5 meters per second squared in the same direction. This is negative, this is negative. So that means if I have an acceleration with the direction of motion, this object is going to speed up and the final velocity anywhere below here is going to be greater than 15 meters per second. That allows me to justify that anywhere below here, the VD, when it reaches the ground, is going to be greater than when it gets to here. And you can justify that in words, formulas, however you want. The way I would justify it is I would write this. So let's say the object is initially thrown with a speed of 15 meters per second upward. When it passes the cliff on the way back down, it will also have a speed of 15 meters per second. And because there's an acceleration with the direction of motion, the speed will continue to increase until it hits the ground shown by the picture below on the side, blah, blah, blah. Part C says a student wants to know how the motion of the rock would be different if it was thrown upward on Earth. Okay, now the major difference is on planet X, G is equal to 5 meters per second squared. But on Earth, G is equal to 10 meters per second squared. In a clear, coherent, paragraph-length response, that is key verbiage of the AP exam. So this is probably something that comes from a short answer response from the AP exam that contains figures, equations. Guys, if they ask you to put figures or if they suggest you to use figures and equations, you better be using figures and equations. That's, it's not a suggestion. It's a passive aggressive like kind of suggestion. If I say also may also contain Put them in there, guys. Get yourself some max credit without babbling. Explain how the motion of the rock on Earth will be different from the motion on planet X in terms of... Now, this is really important. You have to make sure in your response, you talk about the max height. You talk about the speed when it hits the ground. You talk about the time it's in free fall and the acceleration due to gravity. And with that, touch upon some, if not all, of the variables that are involved in free fall, which include... The initial speed, the final speed, the acceleration due to gravity, the displacement, and the time, which they pretty much cover. I'm going to write out what I would put, and then I'll show you why I wrote the things that I did. All right, guys, this might seem like a lot, but it's really not. And yes, guys, this is what a paragraph looks like. I know in your laziness in high school, sometimes you're like, well, the definition of a paragraph is three sentences. Well, this is what a paragraph looks like on the college AP level. So, Let's look about what, talk about what I wrote, and then we'll look at some key features. As we know, the acceleration is less on planet X. Okay, that was me stating and clearing out this. I have now talked about the acceleration due to gravity on both planets. Using the equation, so once again, they asked me to use an equation or figures. I would probably draw a picture too, but I didn't want to, I kind of ran out of space. I can see that the height is indirectly related to A when V and V naught are equal. So I rearrange this formula to show that indirect relationship of max height and A. Therefore, if A is greater on Earth, then the max height will be less. Now I've talked about max height. I've proved it using figures and equations, and I am good to go. That's all I really need to do for that point. Also, I'm going to make sure, did I mention all the variables? Yeah, well, the equation has V, V naught, A, X, and T in it. So this is a five answer for proving max height. I'm going to use the same exact format to talk about the speed when it hits the ground. In both cases, the speed as a rock passes the cliff. Here's where I probably draw that picture that I had before. Will be 15 meters per second. Because it falls the same 100 meters, the VF will be directly related to A. And I show that once again. Because A is greater on Earth, the final speed will be greater. So now I've talked about the speed when it hits the ground, and I've used, once again, all my variables. That is a five answer right there. Next, the time in free fall. Because X equals V naught T plus 1 F A T squared, once again an equation, when X and V naught are equal, which we've already talked about and proved, a and T are indirectly related. If I had more room, guys, I'd probably do what I did here, and I'd probably show that indirect relationship, but we know it's true. Because A is greater on Earth, it will be in flight for less time. 
full part answer. This one right here is probably worth the most amount of points in this entire question. If you want to see more practice problems and things like that, guys, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments below. If you Like I said, if you need some tutoring or you need a problem that you would like solved, email it to me. Get in touch with me. If I have some time, I will gladly do it. I'll see you on the next one.